Hello everyone, uh, this is Monday and we'll give a quick update on what our team has been working on since last update on Wednesday. And let's start, I guess, with Osgan. Okay. Um, since our last meeting on um, last week's Wednesday, I was mainly working on um, Tauri, the subspace desktop, and README and testing. README and testing is done. Thanks to uh, also Nazar and Justin. I believe we managed it. And also on the Tauri side, I have some uh, other news. The backend is now working in the proper place. Now, uh, last week I mentioned that it was working, but only for demo, demo purposes. It was not running in the correct place. Now it's in the correct place. It's making sense. I figured it out. Um, also learned a lot on the front end side. But I, I think we can cover that on more detail on the Wednesday for that. Other than that, I don't have any more updates. And what is the plan for the next days? Right now, it's the, I mean, the subspace desktop is not taking the input parameter as plot size. So I will try to uh, take that as an input parameter so that backend can behave accordingly. Okay, but we still plot everything, right? Yes. Do not necessarily no. have like the limit yet. Okay. Yeah. And does location that you want uh, that you specify in the front end is also accounted for? Sorry, can you repeat? So in, in the front end, uh, we have like in, in the GUI of the application, we have the path where the plot should be located. Does it account for that? Uh, I I never look at the file paths, so I don't know. Okay. So it's just the default, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's default. Okay. Okay. It makes sense. Um, Leo, let's go with you next. Yeah, um, well, the last couple of days on Friday, and I worked a couple of hours in the weekend. Uh, I apply it into the farmer uh, environment and the test environment also, these farmer RPC rules. And I also was testing these uh, other rules that you asked me for the WhatSocket, HTTP, and, and the current one we have for the farmer. Uh, I have these rules applied in test B, and they are working. I can call for HTTP and separate it from the farmer and from the WhatSocket. And also updated the subspace JS repository. I sent the last uh, uh, fixes for the review you sent me yesterday. I made some changes in there uh, to have this first version working and uh, also today started uh, adding some slint and some testings to the relayer application and i think that i will be working in that uh, and i hope uh, that the latest changes in the subspace js repository uh, are, are fine uh, to get this first version in NPM. And yeah, I think uh, that are my updates for now. Uh, have there been any updates on the infrastructure side? Like maybe? Uh, yeah, I think that um, in, in this morning, I updated the, uh, the inactive um, nodes in the farmer, farmnet, farm, far, farmnet, yeah and uh, with the latest images uh, from the Snapchat. Okay, awesome. Uh, Lucien, let's go with you next. Okay, so last week, I have finished the, the initial version of the couple of execution mm -hmm. skeleton, except the communications between the executive peers. And then I have been working on the like real implementations and uh, the like executor gossiping in parallel. Regarding the internal implementation, I have integrated the transaction pool into the, the bundle production, like trying to collect some like extrinsics from the transaction pool. The another thing is I have I converted the bundle sites to a full transaction list in the 
step of processing the bundles. Mm, in terms of the network gossip for the executors, mm, I'm still experimenting with the network gossip, right? Mm, haven't managed to make an initial working version, but I would say it's pretty promising. And uh, again, anyway, it's already like used in Grandpan and uh, the Biffy, that bridge. So, so I think, uh, yeah, maybe it will take a few more days to get the initial working version. Yeah. Yes, I saw that it's actually used as yes, Biffy and Grandpa are used, but they seem to be still tightly coupled to the network. And like Biffy is expected to be used as uh, warp sync, I believe, uh, implementation. So they're they're kind of like in separate crates, but they're really designed to work together. It's not like you can inject something from the outside very easily, but yeah, okay. Basically, you you just need the network service to work with the gossip. Yes. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Um, Justin. Yeah. Um... In the last week, I was trying to figure out and resolve the 4T guard issue that we've been having uh, that Jeremiah mentioned for uh, some of the investors. Beyond that, I uh, spent some time messing around with identity management on the testnet on the updates you pushed out last night, Nazar. Um, and my biggest thing that I was working on at the end of last week was getting the dev updates finished up for Jeremiah so we could get those posted for December. Um, moving forward, the next couple of days, I'll be getting um, a meal updated on the new version of the snapshots and starting to get all the team running. And then from there, move into the rest of the ambassadors, get them running on the uh, farmer net. OK, any any updates on the signing for the desktop application on Windows? I reached out to the Tory team last week. Um, I haven't seen a response from them yesterday. I'm going to try to set up a meeting to where we can just kind of hash it out real quick, you know, but the, they're kind of little distant, to be honest. Okay. Um, Serge, you're next. So on a relayer, uh, there was an issue with heap allocation on dev, again, for both relayers, for Kusama and Polkadot. Uh, so I restarted with increased memory for Node.js process. And I also started checking if the issue persists how can we like uh, monitor um, what's going on with heap so i read about like heap uh, allocation snapshots and stuff uh, in case we will need it and also i was uh, doing research uh, on grandpa and pfi uh, for uh, feed validation and uh, yeah tomorrow i was planning to start actually updating some code on uh, pilot feeds and uh, like node in general. Uh, is that issue with um, heap um, irreplaceable in your machine? No. No? Okay. Um, hmm. That's annoying. All right. Um, on my side, I've been working on, on several things. Um, we had this long-standing kind of problem annoyance that blocks were assigned on the node side. So we were sending the private key, basically from farmer to node to, to sign the block. Uh, I changed that to actually sign on the farmer side. I discovered there is a small um, security inconvenience there. Uh, basically, when you receive, uh, when you sign something, you sign the hash. That's the way Substrate implemented this, uh, at least. And actually, the um, there is this context for signatures, which is actually the same for transactions and for block signing. So theoretically, someone can send you the hash of a transaction to sign, and you will sign it, and it will spend like all of your money if the node is malicious. Uh, so I I'm kind of thinking if we should modify that and split uh, those into different contexts. So you'll only be able to sign blocks and nothing else uh, when the request comes to the farmer. 
Um, but right now, like the, the node uh, is intended to run side by side with the farmer, so it's kind of trusted in that sense. So it's not a big deal, but it is this is potentially something um, to be concerned about. Um, then there was this update to our Shikoni library um, that enabled noise CD support. So it basically changed the whole so subspace archiving crate to support noise CD. So you can potentially verify history or like do ratio coding and decoding recovery in noise CD environment. Uh, there was substrate upgrade because uh, both me and Wu Chang contributed some things upstream to substrate uh, that are useful for us. So that was um, pulled in. There were quite a bit of changes there. And also I've added some commands for uh, farmer identity management. You change the identity file on the disk um, in the breaking way, but uh, now there is a way to see the address, um, the um, public key as, as hex, uh, or the mnemonic seed phrase um, that you can import into your, let's say, extension in the browser. Or you can take the seed from your extension and import it into the farmer so that the same identity will be able, uh, you will be able to use the same, the same identity for the farmer. So you can actually spend the coins you, you earn on the farm net. You can do some test transfers and stuff like that. Uh, previously, it was kind of awkward because technically it was there, but there was no way to use it. Um, yeah, I was also doing quite a bit of research on the networking side uh, to figure out how to make this um, compact um, proof of replication proofs, uh, basically not to include the, the whole encoding into the header. Um, I've started doing some, some refactoring around import queue to actually catch when new blocks arrive so we can try to proactively uh, pull the necessary things from the network or whatnot. Um, it should be extensible or like useful in the future even if we are switching to the uh, DSN. Um, for now, I'm just trying to get something working. Uh, so just wrapped the def default uh, basic import queue into custom struct so I can intercept some of the calls. Uh, so still still working on that, so still um, not, not final, I guess. Um, and I've been doing some research on like other protocols. Um, just found interesting how Solana and Nier and some of the other works, uh, just to, to maybe see if we can apply some of the ideas or just to, in general to better understand how they work. Um, yeah, yeah, those are my engineering updates. Now word to Jeremiah. I'm I'm here. I know, sir. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, sorry I was late, everybody. Um, so uh, I don't have any updates myself on the engineering side, but I do have a couple of questions uh, for different people or comments. Um, Nazar, for the for the block signing issue with the context where it's the same context as the transaction signing. So if I understood correctly, you're just going to go ahead and leave it as is for now where it's the same context, but like make a ticket to, to later on, go ahead and uh, maybe separate that out. I believe there is already to do in the, in the code. Um, uh, if you have, like we already have a separate context for uh, the solution. Uh, if you have separate context for block and for transaction, I don't think we can really easily change the transaction because it's like tied to the extension and stuff. It will be messy to change, uh, but we can definitely change the block signing, I think. Um, so that way we can just never be confused with the correct signature, whether it corresponds to the block or to the transaction. So this is like not super critical, just something I found interesting that Substrate doesn't separate them for some reason. And it would be a breaking change for them, but since we have our own consensus, we can kind of do whatever we want. Right. Yeah, OK, understood. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't a priority and that we could just do it later. It sounds like that's the case. So great. Um, OK, uh, Serge, what was the environment where you were having the heap allocation problem? It happens on dev. dev just on dev. Okay. Yeah, test A and test B are OK so far. Is there something different? Or do you, do you know what the difference is there that's causing it to happen in dev? I know those machines are much weaker. Mm, no, wait. Those are farmnet. No, I think they are the same. Test A, test B, and dev should be the same. Hmm. Yeah, they are dedicated machines. 
What is the main difference in the code right now between dev and test? I think there is no difference between dev and uh, test B. Should be same same code and same configuration, same amount of chains. Okay. Seems strange that it would only occur in dev then and not in production or test. Well, in, in, um, uh, let's let's do the following. Let's uh, restart your layer and expose the port that you would typically use for connecting with debugger. So you can let it run for a while if you see like the usage is, I don't know, over a gigabyte. So it will clearly crash at some point. You can just connect with debugger and you can make a snapshot of the heap and see what kinds of objects are there and maybe get a better idea of where the leak is coming from. You should be able to like connect with SSH and forward the port and connect with Chrome tools. Yeah, this is what I was checking. What are what are the tools to make those snapshots? Okay. Um, and then, uh, Serge, you said that you're gonna you're you're getting ready to start working on doing the implementation for um, validation of feeds. Um, are you? Are you thinking that's going to be inside palette feeds or in a separate palette for validation? So, so far as I understand, we need to have like a beefy client on our side. So it has to be like a separate palette and we use it in uh, the palette feeds. But maybe I'm wrong. I will, I need to, to play with it. What, what do you mean specifically by a separate client on our side? Beefy, beefy client. So there is this like a beefy, I guess it's a protocol on top of Grandpa, which is used for bridges. What is it doing exactly? Is it like a, like a, um, what's the, the, uh, it's like another what? round of, uh, BFT agreement because during grandpa like uh, those authorities they vote for they can vote for different things right different blocks mm -hmm. but after they already finalized some block they need they have this another round with beefy where they vote for the same thing so it's easier to to verify on on the other side Okay. I think that's that's a bit, that's an optimization right now. Um, really, all, all we want to do is just verify grandpa consensus, just like standard, like does the grandpa or sorry, does the um, validator set, do, do they get majority agreement on this? I think it's um, easier with Beefy. They, I think they work on it um, also to use in Ethereum bridge. So yeah. it, it might be just easier for us to validate that instead of the full grandpa but that's just my my understanding so far well what what d does all of the information that the beefy client needs does that all exist within the kusama block header that we're already or the block that we're already bringing in it needs a set of uh, current current set of authorities and uh, mm, some kind of round round current round and uh, if uh, set is changing, then the next set of authorities. So basically, Beefy provides everything that Grandpa provides, but it's easier to verify from what I understood. And I believe there is like a palette or other crate uh, with Beefy in, in substrates, so it might not yet be enabled yeah. in, in Kusama. Uh, Plus was plus, plus, plus month. Yeah, I watched the video like uh, of Parity Peri video like one year ago. So the plan was to add Beefy for Kusama and Polkadot. So I will check if, if that is already in the case. Oh boy, if that was a year ago, it's probably changed drastically. Um, have you have you looked to see if there was anything in the last sub sub zero conference on on Beefy or uh, Grandpa bridging? Well, I checked the frames in the Polkadot repository, and BV is there. So yes, they merged it like recently, last month or month before that. 
but it might not be like in the release of Kusama yet. That's what I'm saying. Might not be deployed. Yeah, and if it, I mean, it's probably still called the same thing, but whatever the actual implementation or the plan is for it, it could have changed drastically in a year. Um, I'm pretty sure there was a talk on bridging. I, I thought, I, I don't think I've seen it yet, but there was one at Sub-Zero like last month or two months ago that should be, should give you a more up-to-date version. And we have a contact at, at Parity who can, who can help us understand this as well if we, if we have any implementation problems. Yeah, I think that was a video about Parity bridges. I checked that one. Um, okay. Okay. And we can we can just do one sided validation with beefy. It doesn't require bi directional communication to work. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, Justin, um, how, how soon will you be able to have the, the information out to the team for uh, joining the farm net? I was going to send it out after this meeting. This will be my first task this morning. Okay. And then what, what do you expect for the ambassadors? Um, well, Emil's already running. I got him going on Friday. Um, as long as there was no, I was going to say, honestly, there was no major issues today, probably tomorrow or maybe Wednesday. Okay. Okay, great. I'll go ahead and put a message out in the chat to let everybody know it's a priority to take the instructions that you've got. How, how are okay. you communicating that to the team, actually? I mean, as it stands, I've been just doing DMs, but I was going to send out like a giant just at staff message, you know, into the uh, general chat or the general. Yeah, chat let's, let's do that. Let's let's create a thread. Um, that way we can have one place when people have like dumb questions or I mean, what they think are dumb questions, at least um, so that everybody can see that and you're not having to manage 12 different individual conversations. Yeah, definitely. Just keep it all consolidated. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. OK. Okay, great. Yeah, let's let's um, let's try to get everybody like um, you know by midweek running running a node, um, so we can give Nazar lots of bugs to work on fixing. Yeah, that's what I told him when he gave me access to identity management yesterday. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for me? All right. I think that's everything, yeah? Yeah, I guess Nazar is handing control back to me. Um, it's just waiting on me to do something here. Okay, well, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you guys again uh, in, in a couple of days.